up that I wanted to see because I wasn't sure what you guys were talking about at all. And evidently this news or leak kind of dropped while I was gone on vacation. So let's see what Belular has to say about this. And, uh, and then we'll get started with the raid. Hey, welcome back to the news. Not going to lie with you, this week's episode is uh, actually a pretty damn good one. So strap Still need in, a tank. let's go, starting off with the release date leak. Yeah, what's the release date leak? Well, this is a bit insane, if true. This image is supposedly <coughs> from an internal Activision Blizzard operations document that outlines the stages of readiness for teams to have in, you know, in prep for some upcoming key releases. Okay. And that means it has dates. The soonest, of course, is Wrath. Ooh, what? Overwatch 2? Overwatch 2 PvP launch early access October 4th, 11 a.m. This is like freaking right around the corner. Oh, wow. Classic pre-patch and pre-sale. And what's interesting... October 25th, 10.0. Holy shit. Is that pre this, which says August 30th, was posted just hours before Check Blizzard Discord. themselves outlined that very same date. And that's eyebrow-raising, to say the least. Wrath right. Classic launches September 26th. After that, we've got Overwatch PvP Early Access, which sounds like how they're going to do that. And then Dragonflight Pre-Patch, October 25th, a full month before the supposed release date of November 28th. Now, month-long pre-patch is actually entirely normal. BFAs was 28 days. The sheer madness of Legion's pre-patch was 42 days. Remember that? 42 days of absolutely absurd leveling. What a time that was. But the point is, it stands to reason. And then we've got Cod Cortez, which is actually the internal name for Modern Warfare 2. Modern Warfare 2, 2, because they've made two Modern Warfare 2s, of course. Now, of note here is that the usual Call of Duty leakers that we follow because of our industry news channel, they are sharing this leak with like zero caveats. And it's usually like, these are people who are in the know. So maybe that suggests that they know this is actually true. And then, of course, for us, the main event is Dragonflight, apparently yeah. November 28th. Uh, November 28th. Where does he see that? Oh, November 28th. Yeah, global launch. A few days over two years after Shadowlands released, which is generally how they do things. So is that realistic? To a low item level? Well, I'd say game-wise, we'll talk about the most recent beta soon, and... I mean, potentially more and more as time goes on. Business-wise, does it make sense? I mean, yeah, they'll obviously want it out in that quarter. Now, the one issue players could have is some Christmas rating. Blizzard have said that they've basically commented they'll saying they will comment use on this. Another death knight. Whoa, why was that so loud? Wait, wait him. Wait him. Thank you for the follow and welcome to our... Thank you for the sub. Death Knight of our Scourge. Thank you, thank you so much for that. A Appreciate the on. sub so much, man. Uh, so they know Four months in a row. Damn. The, you know, the people's problems Damn. are a few reasons. I mean, one, over Death the holiday, of our scourge. a thank lot you, of people Adam. just have shit to do. Two, fewer Blizzard staff would be around to monitor the race to world first. Now, of course, the race isn't all that important for the vast majority of players, but I think Blizzard know that if the race ended up being a bit of a disaster because of tuning, then they would start their expansion off with potentially a drama, and that would be a bit sad for everyone. Now, in Shadowlands, Nathria Normal and Heroic opened December 8th, Mythic opened on the 15th, and then Limit, now known as Liquid, they won that race, crossing the finish line at 9.58 p.m. GMT, December 23rd. So, it was a bit awkward, but it did actually work out for that race. Now, this time around, it would be a bit more tricky because Dragonflight is, relatively speaking, launching just shy of a week later, uh, like in terms yeah. of days. Uh, than than um, Shadowlands did. So what a Blizzard. Uh, what do they do? Well, here's the options, right? <sighs> you got you got one month of pre-patch here. One month of pre-patch. I don't know what that means. I guess in terms of how long they typically last, but one month of pre-patch seems okay. I mean, you got to figure you're going to be making your Drakthir one month to level up from 58 to 60 seems. They could fairly easy release the game, but delay raid to January. They could release the game in I don't know January, I guess. Uh, they could release the expansion yeah, a week earlier than what. It they're not going to want raid during Christmas. That's for sure. Is in this document. Uh, they could, of course, then just proceed as this document says not sure and if just you deal with Chicago. Christmas raiding. Of course, raiding. I remember. Honest, I think After season just one, do coming that. back again. Awesome, Imagine Adam. Good, good time to come back. Mag, what's up? Lol. Lol, lol, a bit of briefs. LOL now. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> thank you, the thank you for the bit, will Mag. Just do what mine did last time and suspend formal raiding for a week. That's fine. I would rather have my hands on the expansion. When yeah, I I'd rather have time. the expansion as well. Now, the main downside the, here do what is you that have some guilds might be super Give unreasonable the about raiders not being around. Um, which, I mean, that's <laughs> not to be insensitive, but that doesn't exactly sound like a guild that has its players' best interests at heart. And hitting up Twitter, plenty of the Race to World First people don't seem to be overly concerned about this kind of thing either. I suppose the bummer here is Blizzard's staff having to make a pretty shitty sacrifice. Um, so that's definitely something to think about, but I suppose people could then say, look at retail, look at healthcare, look at hospitality, look at all the other sectors where, and I don't do this to pull out some whataboutism, but you know, you, you got the point I'm making, right? Um, so who knows there? I mean, obviously, if there's going to be work done over that period, you would hope that people are especially well compensated for those hours. Right, right, working over now, the, the holidays. the rest of us, look, tell you what, right? I don't know about you, but this is what it's like for me. If I get to be at home, get to be cozy, running some keys with my friends, exploring the world, doing the cool yes. new raps we'll talk about soon in today's video. Uh, yeah, hell yeah. Then hell yeah, I'd like to do that over the holiday. It's perhaps the one time I can actually play WoW well like I used to when I was younger, so frankly, I would relish it. Now, finally, for this leak thingy, we've got the Diablo 4 pre-purchase and a reveal at the Game Awards. <clears throat> That's probably when we'll get for the release December. date, and that all makes sense. The Game Awards is a massive event, and it will round off a quarter that we'll have seen Wrath Classic, Overwatch, a new retail expansion for WoW, a very strong sort of comeback story that Yabara and Co. are undoubtedly wanting to craft. Now D four is. I mean, yeah, this closed. is this is a busy this is a busy time right here. Like October to November, they got. Uh, I mean, you're talking about October to November. You got Overwatch to WoW, COD, and Diablo uh, at the very end. Leaked, so I imagine somebody got in trouble there. But yeah, if the timings line up, that all makes sense, especially because they said the D4 would be out within a year of its... Did uh, I fast forward this shit? ...fill those, uh, you know, the rap bars by doing world content. And if you want to support the team that makes all of this content and also yeah, makes yeah, the yeah, game, yeah, which yeah. is literally happening right behind that wall, then our Patreon is a place to do that. And man, do it. Support their month Patreon. this month, the art that they have made is absolutely awesome. The Sam, Chimera pin us. is awesome. <laughs> and thanks to all of your support, we've actually I know, been I haven't seen to a mage uh, yet. up a little bit. We've got a new member of staff joining Reinhardt. soon, who is going to be like, like one of her primary jobs is Patreon. Ensuring that everything is ship shape, running good i am super hyped about it and uh yeah basically it's all really good stuff so thanks for all your support you can get all that dope art over there at that links i mean honestly i'm just thrilled about it so we've we now were talking about this of blizzard's non-instanced endgame content and i am bloody well happy to tell you that the reps actually look like they're going to be pretty damn good this time around yeah the, the reps fact, look good it seems to be a massive massive step up over every expansion since Sam mr tanking pangaria Wally, okay, in terms yeah. of that world content <laughs> At least in principle. I'm glad that now that they're returning Street to flash reps, they're I know, I've always kept that, that effect trying to do them better. So Say what let's you get into this. It. There's four major factions. Each one has a renown bar. But don't worry about the Shadowlands issues. You can be a member of all of these reps at the same time. You can progress them all at the same time. The renown bar is just another way of displaying reputation. So each renown level looks like this. Basically, it looks like a small rap bar. Right, and you, just, you know, you just keep on filling those. You got the renown levels. Now, of course, you fill those, uh, you know, the rat bars by doing world content, and that is where things look a bit different. So each rep is heavily themed with unique gameplay. I'm going to go through them now. We've got the Valdrak in the court. They have got profession work orders, activities, and exploration. So loads there for the crafters. Yeah, Blizzard, the crafters course, will really love that. We went, we went through a bunch of that. A true way to play World of Warcraft. They also have dragon riding racing content. That's awesome. I really want that. Trust me, I played it on alpha. It is fun as hell. And then they've got elite mob areas and a big siege against the uh, Jaradin, uh, like the big giant people. So basically, there's something there for almost everybody. And I suppose with the reps, I hope we get similar feelings to those Timeless Isle elites that I think were very successful. Next, then, the Dragon Scale Expedition, which is basically our factions from the Alliance and the Horde kind of banding together, right? The Explorers right. Guild and the Reliquary. So they have loads of treasures, as well as two new types of world quest, rock climbing and cataloging. 
Now, the rock climbing looks really neat. There was actually a like tutorial quest for that in, I believe, Owner and Planes? Um, Dragon and, you know, NASCAR, the around only, doing the some only rock tournament. Climbing. It was very much one where you couldn't fail, <clears throat> but there are like rock climbing segments in World Quests, I believe, where you, you know, where you can. A world, a rock climbing World Quest. See, like that's the kind of stuff that you want to see. Do it properly, right? You want to, you want to see World Quests. I do appreciate like different World Quests. I do, World Quests that kind of make you do something unique in the game. Even if sometimes they look so janky, when they're trying to get you to do something, like how <laughs> the rock climbing looks right here. Uh, but I appreciate the creativity, right? Instead and of just like one, clear out a quests, zone or kill 40s or whatever. Those seem to be Pokemon Snap. And let me tell you, I would not have given a shit about that like two years ago. But since I actually played Pokemon Snap on a Nintendo Switch and was shocked how enjoyable I found it. Uh, yeah, that's really big. Another nice thing about the rock climbing too, though. You can rock climb super high. And then the you can drag and ride to your next thing. So it's a really great, like, uh, gameplay flow. But look, this is them shaking it up, trying something different, trying to make world quests that aren't just go kill the dude. Go collect some bear asses. It's, it's not that. So basically, this is experimentation. Well, I mean, what different types of gameplay? Madness. <laughs> and then, of course, you can, you know, progress and become better at rock climbing, better at treasure hunting. So there's a whole thing there. And then the Tuscar, they have loads of fishing content, which includes like fishing, you know, those like little ice holes, fishing in different biomes, and also dropping fishing nets for offline progress. And all of that has got further progression. There's also a feast event. Basically, it's a, like a, a marker will appear on the map, uh, talking, you know, showing the event. It will give you 10 a minutes feast to event? arrive, I believe. And uh, then like the whole group just contributes to making a big soup. It's kind of neat. Uh, there's oh. like, you know, different stages to it. The better Look you at do, that. the better the hour See, again, creative world quest. Do be, it, Blizzard. Uh, yeah. Plus more rewards, I imagine. They've also got a few elite this. mob locations as well. I mean, hey, they're the Tuscar. I think they're going to be popular. Um, looks like Oh, the nice Tuscar are going to be well. the uh, and extremely then finally, popular the Centaur race. So there's a new We're going to get those added in That has sure. a caravan that travels across the zone, giving you different things to do at each stop of the caravan. There's uh, hunts that you can join. I believe there's actually progress within the various centaur uh, characters as well. So yeah, definitely one I want to get some more testing in on. And this is just brilliant to me. You know, I've been sad about the state of reputation since the end of Mists of Pandaria. I mean, after that, they just turned into bars to, to grind. Or, you know, the, the world quest ones where every single rep feels the same. Here, they all seem to feel different. They seem to be more themed yeah, in their gameplay. Exactly. This actually seems like Blizzard making a decently major move. And we looked at them. There is no player progression tie. Content, and that is so, so Like uh, power progression. Now, this build also brings level 70 character templates. So that's big. Wait, we're pulling out the There's another yeah, dungeon that our uh, resident Cutting Edge Raider Dakor absolutely loved. Whatever, it's we'll just across see where the whole Centaur goes. Zone, and it involves dragon riding. And I know some people could be a bit salty about the dragon riding being involved in the dungeon, but look, honestly, it's fun as shit. And he said it was really, really cool. So yeah, I think that <laughs> dragon dungeon riding is big in guy. the dungeon. Then monks have got That's their pretty talents. Cool. We've seen a few more waves of I'll iteration take that. on other classes. Still a few outstanding ones, but hopefully those come in soon. And overall with this, I would say that beta is probably only a week or two away Focused now that we're essence. actually having max level character templates. Also, here's the login screen. Give me a simple yes no, or no down in the comments. Is Should that the login screen? I mean, it'd be kind of cute to have Syndragosa there in the Wrath Classic login screen, and then maybe Alex Straza on live, right? Okay. Next, we've actually got even more. Is this really the login screen? You guys know how I feel about login screens. I need a good login screen, and this looks pretty badass. Now, I don't see the animation yet, but oh my god. I love this. Next, we've oh, so the fog is even... moving. It does need a dragon. It definitely needs a dragon. You gotta have a dragon More in there. Good shit. Patch 9.2.7 is here, bringing with it the first version of the new mobile auction house, region-wide commodities, and importantly for many of us, a new chat channel specifically for boosting, along with a new policy. A new chat channel for policy boosting? policy is good news. So with the new boosting channel in existence, any promotion <clears throat> of selling boosts, carries, or similar services in return for gold that are posted in the regular trade chat will officially be considered spam with proper action taken. Oh, look at that. Oh, They're yeah. creating a channel just for it. somebody is selling a boost in trade this chat, is great. you right-click in that sucker and report it. 
If you don't want to see boosting in your chat channel, open up settings, disable the channel. I know I will. Now, of course, a policy is only as good as Not bad. That's actually a big so improvement. That better be good. <laughs> I mean, at least it seems like this would be a fairly simple thing to automate. But look, if trade is still a mess, then we I'm can say, right now that hey, we're Blizzard, get kill. you're not holding up your end of the bargain here. A bit like with a pre-made group finder, which sometimes is still full of boosting spam. But hey, on the very least, it was nice to log into Twitter that morning and just see loads of people tweeting screenshots of them disabling the trade services channel. So overall, that should clean things up. As for the likes of the regional commodities... Yeah, that, honestly, I've always I've said that. Give the boosters their place in the game. That's it. That. I just have to imagine it'll average out prices and that'll be good for some servers, less good for other servers. We'll just have to see how it shakes out. There's Certainly a lot of room right here. for buyers and smaller servers, this will be really good. Um, maybe less good for some gold makers who prefer the gameplay of a smaller server. Now, Blizzard did actually have to disable the AH for a little bit, but I believe that has since been resolved. Yeah, I don't know if the auction house issues have been solved because Season I was trying to get them. shit this Look, morning and Blizzard it wasn't working. Blizzard have been making great changes on live. The Conquest cap? Gone! Spoils of War buff. That's back for the whole season, giving people 25% Conquest and 40% Honor gains. Can we have also then the raised the minimum item level floor for Solo Shuffle to 278. Now, of course, yeah, the PvP cosmetic rewards are a bit lame and... And that just is what it is. In other news, then, not lame also for Dragon doubles Flight. Cosmic They're amazing. Flux drops from incidenced content. That's pretty sweet. Sure does make the 10,000 needed for uh, all of your 278 conduits a bit nicer. Uh, but seriously, though, even just doing a quick LFR wing, that drops like 250 a boss, I think. So you do get a ton of Flux that way. Now, also, in addition to the new conduit uh, item, Flux is used for making your tier and also max rank legendaries, plus unlocking a few nice legendary powers, which I definitely did appreciate on my new Disciplined Priest. Overall, then, it's just wonderful to see how active and responsive Blizzard are being this time around with this season, especially with the likes of Dungeon Tuning. This uh, is honestly so much better than what we've been used to. The most recent wave of hotfixes is actually great. They added in a new blue swirly that telegraphs the thunderous breath ability during oh, nice. the last boss encounter. Yes, in I was getting Depot. smacked around by, by that. By the way, Grim Rail Depot. I mean, it. I love it. It's awesome. God damn, that's a fun time in Sanguine, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I just love a camera in an MMO. Uh, but look, it is brilliant. Uh, you know, the older, less refined design language kind of hurt that encounter, so it's nice to see Blizzard make a change there. It's just a lot more clear now, and I imagine, especially for those higher keys where it's a lot more punishing, that this will be great. Also, damn, those lower Kara nerfs. Uh, so look, this is a hyper-responsive Blizzard, right? And if this is in Dying any well. way indicative of how Blizzard will treat Dragonflight, then I've got to say, things are on the up. Okay, look at this. This is a vendor with a range of item level 252 gear that is on sale for a new currency called Primeval Essence. It's on the beta. Primeval uh, now Essence. Now, many have speculated that we do this need more is currencies in this game, for sure. Gear. Definitely and need more currencies. We've also got a few data mine snippets that clue us What's in up, to what this pre-patch event might be. Apparently, there are going to be four primalist invasions across different regions of Azeroth. Ooh, nice. These seem to include Legion invasion-esque. Badlands, Northern Barrens, and Tirasfall Glades, Ooh. with each one being I love this a stuff. different Going back to Ungaro. elemental presence. Seems kind of neat. I think it would be double cool if Blizzard could tap into the Legion pre-patch event power and really give us some of those good leveling speeds. Uh, if you weren't there, then I'm... It's, it's a shame great. because Legion, Legion pre-patch pre was, was one of the most event. incredible moments. We just came out yeah. of this really rough period of Warlords of Draenor, and that event just slapped <coughs> super hard and straight up. It, it was. I mean, it, it was it, great. It was kind of that was a good time. how fast you could level up your characters. It was crazy. But goddamn, did it get people back into the game. The sheer quantities of players that, that were seen, it, it, I mean, after playing WAD when we were stuck in our garrisons, it was just absurd. You know, to see the skies of Azeroth just awash with, with flying mounts. And right, yeah, there was flying. Every time there was a Legion cool. event, so it was, people Blizzard were everywhere. Kind of recapture that. What's up? Good morning, Ed Grove. So there you go. Look, that's the news for this week. Uh, almost all good stuff, actually. That's nice to say. I mean, hey, if Dragonflight doesn't have all of the borrowed power bullshit that took out Shadowlands, it has world content that's a step up, yes. dungeons that are really good, Look, Raids that are everything about Dragonflight so far seems promising. And the things that have had issues, Blizzard has listened to the feedback and changed them. 
So, I mean, it, it, everything seems to be pointing in the right direction for this expansion. Really good. I mean, damn, that kind of sounds like. Am I the on Copium or am I actually excited for, for the right time. reasons? I don't know, we but I am excited. We, of course, need to have the class progression actually be fun. So, there you go. I'm not going to say pre-order, obviously, but I think there are plenty of reasons for cautious optimism <clears> at this <throat> stage of time. Which is a pretty insane thing. I mean, if you, if you told me that a year yeah, ago when time. it was, uh, you know, 9.1 PTR times, I don't think I would have believed you. All right, that's it for me. Look, if you want to support the team, get some badass loot and that kind of thing. Yes. Check out the Patreon down below. Great Other than video. That, though, thanks for tuning in. And it looks like November. Time. End of November. We could be getting Dragonflight. End of November and uh, October uh, pre-patch. This looks great, man. These dates look legit. I mean, I'm, I'm excited. If this is the case, we're going to get pre-patch end of October. Fantastic. Halloween pre-patch. Nice stuff. All right. It's time, guys. It's time. We uh, we pulled early. Uh, we killed a boss during the video. I mean, I don't even know how we did that, but we did. And uh, it's time to get the playlist going. This, after all, is Pug Raid Central. And we got bosses to kill. We're already on the second boss. It is time. We're